Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 4. Negotiations are still ongoing for the planned upgrade of the state-owned oil refinery Petrojam. Former Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley gave the update during a question and answer segment in Tuesday's sitting of Parliament. Dr. Wheatley says two Chinese firms submitted unsolicited proposals to upgrade the oil refinery's vacuum distillation unit, VDU. One of the firms, Sino Hydro, was recommended by a technical team from PEDVESA and the Jamaican government. Sino Hydro submitted two estimates, one for 91.3 million US dollars, which was based on Chinese standards, and a 119 million US dollar estimate based on Western standards. As of June 2018, negotiations are still underway. No agreement has yet been signed, and no money has been spent with Sino Hydro to undertake any work relating to the upgrade of the VDU at Petrojam. Minister Wheatley says in April a U.S. firm also submitted a proposal for an estimated cost of 87.6 million U.S. dollars, plus or minus 30 percent. But the PDVSA GOJ task force is reviewing that proposal to ensure it accounts for all pertinent factors. I am advised that to date, the review of the U.S. engineering firm's estimate unearthed some deficiencies which have been acknowledged by the firm. And the task force is now awaiting an updated estimate from the U.S. engineering firm in order to complete validation. The heads of government of CARICOM are expected to deliberate on a report from the Regional Marijuana Commission during their meeting in Montego Bay between today and Friday. The report from the Commission, which was established in 2014, examines the pros and cons and makes recommendations on legalizing marijuana. At a press conference Monday, CARICOM Secretary General Erwin LaRoque said the Commission encouraged the decriminalization of marijuana for recreational use and freeing up its use for scientific purposes. But he was quick to add that though the Commission supported easing restrictions, it still abided by international trade laws and statutes which prohibit the trade in marijuana. The Commission will be making some very far-reaching recommendations in terms of decriminalization, in terms of moving towards regulation rather than um, as a controlled substance such as we have for alcohol and moving more and more into the area of tobacco. But recognizing the very um, important medicinal uses of marijuana as well. The 39th meeting of the Conference of the Heads of Government of CARICOM is also expected to address the implementation of a single market and economy crime, disaster management, and climate change. CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister Andrew Holness will also share the findings of a report from the Bruce Golding-led Commission to review Jamaica's relations within the CARICOM and CARIFORUM frameworks. Government is far advanced with plans to enact a raft of legislation to further develop the island's shipping and port industries. Transport and Mining Minister Robert Montague says the legislation will be in place by March 2019. The government has before the parliament the Ballast Water Act and we will soon get into the parliament the Maritime Environmental Protection Act and signing off on the Maritime Labor Convention. The minister says government is also moving to enhance the security measures available to the island's ports. In that drive of expansion, we are mindful of the need for security in this globalized world. And within the security realm, there is also the need to enhance cyber security. Minister Montague was speaking at Monday's opening ceremony for the 21st Annual General Meeting and Conference of the Port Management Association of the Caribbean. The Caribbean Maritime University has launched its first ever academic journal since attaining university status on June 9, 2017. Which will be no doubt quite useful to your members in determining the kinds of training programs you can participate in or advise your young students about available training opportunities. The journal, entitled International Journal of Maritime Themes, was launched at the opening ceremony for the 21st Annual General Meeting and Conference of the Port Management Association of the Caribbean. Government has promised to be fair in its review of the 1983 Rent Restriction Act. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Carl Samuda, gave the commitment Tuesday at the 7th in a series of consultations on the Act held at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. You have my 100% support as a minister with responsibility for this area in ensuring that whatever changes are made to this Rent Restriction Act is done so as quickly as possible. 
Minister Samuda says the consultations are aimed at striking a balance between the rights and responsibilities of landlords and tenants. The Rent Restriction Act is being updated to provide effective regulation and clear guidelines on the rules and obligations of tenants and landlords. It's being undertaken by the Ministry's Housing Policy Research and Monitoring Branch in partnership with the Rent Assessment Board. And finally, the JCDC Festival Song Roadshow will be coming to residents in Papine, Crossroads, Olympic Way, Downtown and Halfway Tree this Friday. The roadshow is part of activities leading up to the July 15 finals booked for the Rani Williams Entertainment Center. Culture Minister Olivia Grange made the announcement at last night's launch of the Jamaica 56 celebratory events, which will be held under the theme, One Love, One Family. The Independence Festival Village returns this year at the National Stadium, opening on Wednesday, August 1. The week of celebration continues with annual events, such as the Gospel Song and Miss Jamaica Festival Queen competitions, the World Reggae Dance Championships, and Kingston Reggae Night. On Independence Day, grand gala activities will be held in Kingston and Montego Bay. Minister Grange also announced a culinary expo from August 2 to 3 to boost the gastronomy sector. Let us celebrate together. Be proud of our achievements and be confident in our purpose to continue to build a better Jamaica with our arts and culture at the center of our development. Other activities planned include street dances, concerts, church services and flag raising ceremonies in towns and communities across the country. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.